All right, section 5-5, we're going to be using the law of signs, which should be a review from your geometry class. And so first of all, what is, when do we use law of signs? Well, we've been using in chapter 4, when we first started working with our trigonometry unit, we started talking about right triangles, and we are looking for the missing sides and angles of a right triangle. So we are using SOHCAHTOA. And now we're going to be looking at, well, how do you find missing sides and missing angles of non-right triangles? And so here's where we're going to be using the law of sines today and then the law of, sine, law of cosines tomorrow. So a reminder of what the law of sines formula is. It is a formula that consists of three ratios, making them all proportional to each other. And we are going to take the sine of angle A and divide it by little a which is equal to the sine of angle B over little b, which is equal to the sine of angle C over little c. Now, little a, little b, and little c. Little a is the side opposite of angle A. Little b is opposite of angle B. And little c is going to be opposite of angle C. So that's how those three sides get worked into this problem here. So what we're going to be doing is setting up the ratios and then hopefully getting a proportion and then solving the proportion. So I'm going to go through an example of how do we find missing sides and missing angles. Uh, one thing that I do want you to be aware of is that towards the end of this video, we will be talking about something that did not happen in geometry. So you may, this may look like review, but there is going to be one part of it that's going to be new to you. So finding missing sides, if we start this out creating a ratio, if I start with angle A here of 36 degrees, I see that the opposite side is 8. And then if I look at 48 degrees here, the opposite side is X. This allows me to set up my proportion. So I have the sine of 36 degrees over 8 is equal to the sine of 48 degrees over X. And I do not have um, angle C, or I'm not interested in finding little c, so I don't need to worry about that ratio. Here I have two ratios, um, one of them being a complete ratio, and the other one has my variable in it, so I can go ahead and solve this. Solving proportions, we cross multiply. So I'm going to have x times the sine of 36 degrees is equal to 8 times the sine of 48 degrees. Solving for x then, I'm going to divide both sides of my equation by the sine of 36 degrees. And then we're going to go to our calculators to come up with our answer. One thing that you have to be careful about here is we've been in radian mode for quite some time, so you're going to want to make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. So I'm going to go ahead and change mine over. Because we're taking the sine of a degree, um, so that's why we need to be in that mode. So what I'm going to do here is as I plug this in, I do not want to round my answer until the final say. So I'm going to go ahead and take 8 times the sine of 48 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. I'm going to divide that answer then by the sine of 36 degrees. And so my solution here for x is 10.11 or 10.1. So that means that little b has a length of 10.1. Now, if I were to work with this same problem here, um, but instead of finding little b, let's say I wanted to find little c. So I move that x over. And let's say I did not do this problem at all. So I was given this problem to begin with. Well, if I set this up, I've got my 36 degrees and 8, so I know I have one complete ratio, the sine of 36 degrees over 8. And then I have um, the sine of angle B, which is 48 degrees, over little b. And then I have the sine of angle C over x. Well, when I look at this here, I have one complete ratio, which is good. The problem is that when I look at what I'm trying to solve it with here with the x, I don't have an angle to go along with that. Well, because we have gotten through our geometry class, we should know that in a triangle that the three angles add up to 180 degrees. So even though it's not given to me here, we can go ahead and figure out what that angle is going to measure. So if I take 180 
and I subtract 36 degrees and I subtract 48 degrees, I end up seeing that my angle of C is 96 degrees. So we can go ahead and plug that in. This allows me not to use the sine of 48 over little b. I do not need that. And so now going and solving for x, I can cross multiply. Taking x times the sine of 36 degrees is equal to 8 times the sine of 96 degrees. Dividing both sides by the sine of 36 degrees. We go to our calculator to come up with our answer. So 8 times the sine of 96 degrees. Take that answer, divide it by the sine of 36 degrees, and we get 13.5. Notice that I'm not rounding my answer until the last and final step. So there's how you find missing sides with law of sines. Now we're going to be looking at how do we find missing angles. So here I have my angle A, um, I have little a, I have little b, and I'm trying to find angle b. So I have my ratio here of the sine of angle a of 26.3 degrees over little a, which is 7, and my sine of angle b, which is going to be x degrees over 6. So I have two ratios here that I'm going to work with. I don't care about angle C and little c, so I don't have to worry about that. Going ahead and solving by cross multiplying. So 6 times the sine of 26.3 degrees is equal to 7 times the sine of x. And here I need to get my sine of x alone, so I'm going to divide both sides by 7. This is giving me that the sine of x is equal to 6 times the sine of 26.3 degrees, all over 7. Well, if we want to figure out what an angle is, that's where our inverse sine comes in. So to find my angle, I'm going to have to take the inverse sine of this answer that my calculator is going to give me, and that's going to end up giving us our angle. So I'm going to start out by 6 times the sine of 26.3. I'm going to take that answer. I'm going to go ahead and divide it by 7. And here's my decimal. Now, I'm not going to round this at all. I'm going to go ahead and take the inverse sign, and I'm going to have the calculator grab that answer that I just had. And here I end up with 22.3 degrees. And so there is our angle for x. Now, we have a problem, however. Okay. When you are using the law of signs, we have a slight issue because there is the possibility for more than one answer. Okay, So I'm going to be coming right back to this problem. But what we need to look at here is the ambiguous case of using the law of signs. Ambiguous meaning that we can have two possible answers here. I'm going to take you back to when we started talking about our sine curve and when we were solving, um, finding solutions for the sine curve. When you have your curve here, if we go from 0 to 2 pi, which is the same thing as 0 to 360 degrees, here if I wanted to solve for the sine of x equals 0.3798, what's happening here is you can notice that there are two solutions between 0 and 180. And I know that inside a triangle, I have the angles that have to add up to 180 degrees. What that means is that you may have two possible answers for your triangle. So when we go and find our first solution, when I take the inverse sine of 0.3798, this is going to give me my first answer. So I'm taking the inverse sine, 0.3798, and here's where I get 22.3 degrees. Degrees, since I'm in degree mode, and now to find out what the other possible angle is, we're going to have to take 180 degrees minus 22.3 degrees. Now when we were working with our solutions on the radian scale, we would take pi minus our radian. Here we're just taking 180 instead since it's the same as pi. Subtracting here, I'm going to end up with 157.7 degrees. Now, what this means here is these are the two possible solutions.
but it does not mean that both of them are solutions to our problem. What do I mean by that? If I'm going to go back up to this problem, this number of 22.3 is the same number that we were working with here. And so when I take 180 degrees and I subtract 22.3 degrees and we get the 157.7 degrees, here's my two possible solutions. The thing is that in a triangle, the angles cannot exceed 180 degrees. I already know that one angle is 26.3 degrees. Okay, I found out another angle here of 22.3 degrees. So if I add those two angles together, they cannot exceed 180 degrees because we need room for a third side. If I add those two values together, I end up with 48.6. The fact that this does not go over 180 degrees means that we have room for a third angle. And that's what we need in order to have a triangle. Now, if I look at this next value here and I take that 26.3 and I add 157.7 to it, I end up with 184 degrees. Well, we have a problem here because 184 degrees exceeds the 180 degrees that are allowed. So we do not have any room. So there's no room for a third angle. So with that being said, that tells us that we only have one solution. The 157.7 will not work. We are only going to have one solution. So it's a matter here of coming up with one angle, finding a second angle, and then checking to see if it works out or not. I'm going to go through one more example here because I think I've got enough time to do that. I do. So going through another example here of finding an angle to kind of help with this whole idea. Here I've got 30 degrees um, and I've got 6 and we're looking for x. So setting this up, I've got the sine of 30 degrees over 6 is equal to the sine of x over 7. Cross multiply 7 times the sine of 30 degrees is equal to 6, sorry one second, all right, so 7 times the sine of 30 degrees is equal to 6 times the sine of x. I'm going to divide both sides of my equation by 6. This gives us that the sine of x is equal to 7 times the sine of 30 degrees over 6. Finding our angle, we're going to take the inverse sine of 7 sine of 30 over 6 and that's going to give us our angle. So I go to the calculator 7 times the sine of 30 degrees and hit enter. I'm going to divide that answer by 6 and now we're going to take the inverse sine of the answer. Again I'm not rounding my answer until the very final step. And so here we end up with 35.7 um, degrees. So there's our first possible angle. But because I use the inverse sine, we have to find the other possible angle. So we're going to take 180, subtract 35.7 degrees, and I end up with 144.3 degrees. So here are my two possible solutions that I may have. What we're going to do now is to check to see if they are solutions or not. We're going to take the angles and add them to the original 30 that we had. So 30 plus 35.7 gives me 65.7 degrees. This means that we have room for our third angle, so that's a good thing. And then if I take 30 plus 144.3, this gives me 174.3. Even though there's not a whole lot of room, I still have room for a third angle. So what that means here is that we have two solutions.
So our angle of X will either be 35.7 and be an acute triangle, or it could also be 144.3 degrees and be an obtuse triangle. So what we've done here is gone through using and reviewed how to use the law of signs. The new part to it is the whole idea of the ambiguous case, which we did not cover when we were in geometry. Um, so be aware of that. But otherwise, if you have questions, make sure you let me know. If something does not make sense to you, then please go back and watch it again.